Hello students, today we will discuss about biotechnology, the principles, process and applications involved in biotechnology. Biotechnology, the term was coined by Karl Lerecki, a Hungarian engineer. This is actually a fusion of two terms, that is biology and technology. It led to what is called biotechnology. What is actually this biotechnology? Here, microorganisms, cells of plants or animals, its components or constituents are used to produce products or processes like services which are helpful for human society or which are useful for human welfare. This is what is called biotechnology. That is we are using different types of organisms for our benefit. The origin and application of biotechnology can be traced back to prehistoric times. We are all aware in the mythological stories, etc., we have heard about use of fermented products like leavened bread, then wine, etc. So all these are produced by using microorganisms. These organisms cannot be seen by our naked eyes. Another common example is of curd. Namgela gotiru hage, halali now one solpa mosrana hakidre, next day nodidre adu curd ag bitirate, atwa mosra ag bitirate. Idi author agate and tandre, halali atwa mosrali, there are some microorganisms. Nam kandin the kanala because they are very, very small. These microorganisms actually convert the milk into curd. So these are very common examples. Apart from that, we can even quote examples of idli, dosa, all these are fermented products. So use of wine, uh, which is nothing but a product which is uh, uh, formed from fermentation of juices like grape juice, etc. All these are examples of biotechnology. So it has been used since ages. But the recent uh, biotechnology, what we call the modern biotechnology, it includes very advanced principles of biotechnology. Genetic engineering. What is this genetic engineering? The genetic material is altered over here or some manipulation is done in the genetic material and then it is introduced into a host cell wherein it will be expressed in the form of a different type of phenotype. This happens with the help of a technique called DNA recombination or recombinant DNA technology. What is this recombinant DNA technology? It is nothing but two different DNAs are made to join and form a new combination or what we say a new combination of genes which is called recombinant DNA or in simple words it is nothing but a hybrid of two different types of DNAs and it forms what is called recombinant DNA. These recombinant DNAs are only introduced into the host cell and they are made to multiply that is cloned and later when they express the proteins which are uh, you know produced by these uh, genes can be utilized for our benefit. Now basically if um, recombinant DNA technology has to take place then it needs few tools. The main tools are some enzymes. Enzymes include like restriction endonucleases what we call REN. These are commonly called molecular scissors. Why? Because these are used to cut the DNA at specific sequences, what we call restriction sites. Then there are some other enzymes also like DNA ligase. This is used for joining the DNA segments. Then alkaline phosphatase which will prevent unwanted joining of DNA. Like this certain enzymes are required. Then other tool which is required is a vector. What is actually a vector? Vector is nothing but a DNA which can carry a foreign DNA. So why we have to insert the DNA in a vector? That is because vector have the capacity to multiply or produce multiple copies of it. So when they replicate, what happens? Even the foreign gene which is incorporated in them, they also multiply. The commonly used vectors are plasmids, bacteriophage, then uh, cosmids, phagmids, etc. Then the next thing which is required is a host. Now the recombinant DNA what we have prepared, it cannot have a individual existence. That is if they want to replicate, they need a living system wherein using the resources present in the living system, they can multiply. For this we need a host. The commonly used host is uh, the bacterial cell, for example, E. coli. So in them they multiply. Later, 
the gene which is present in the host it is allowed to express itself that is it is allowed to produce the protein which we are interested in. So, later when the protein is collected they undergo a process called downstreaming. So, this is basically the tools which are required and how the process of recombinant DNA technology takes place. Now, the steps involved in recombinant DNA technology in brief. So, first and foremost thing we have to isolate DNA the desired DNA or the foreign DNA. It is nothing but the DNA which is capable of producing the proteins which we desire for or which can produce some desired phenotypical character. So, such genes have to be taken out of the cell. So, for this we digest the cells using some cell wall degrading enzymes like uh, chitinase or lysozyme such kind of enzymes are used and the cell wall is degraded. Later you can see that when the chilled uh, ethanol is added DNA gets precipitated. Once DNA gets precipitated it is taken out and then it is treated with restriction endonuclease. These enzymes they go and cleave the DNA into different sized uh, segments. Then the segments have to be separated. For this we depend upon electrophoresis. So, during gel electrophoresis what happens? The fragments of different uh, size they are subjected to electric current. DNA molecules as you people know they are negatively charged. So, they start moving towards the anode and there is a separation of DNA fragments based on their size. Once they get separated the next thing what we people have to do is it has to be the separation takes place on an agarose gel. So, from this gel block the DNA segments are cut and removed and then from this blocks we have to remove only the DNA by a process called elusion. So, in this manner once we get the DNA next is if the amount of DNA is very less we can go for what is called PCR technique. What is this PCR technique? Polymerase chain reaction. So, after this when we get the DNA in enough amount we go for the next step which is called insertion of foreign gene into the host. Now, in the second step insertion into the host cell what we do is the host cell will not take up the DNA very easily. So, it has to be made competent that is it has to be made porous. For this there are different methods we can treat the host cell to very cold conditions wherein calcium are present. So, in the presence of calcium chloride uh, when the temperature is also low the plasma membrane they become destabilized. Then the temperature is also suddenly increased to give a heat shock. Once the heat shock is given you can see that the plasma membrane again destabilizes. Then the temperature is again brought back to very low temperature. So, this makes the plasma membrane destabilize and the DNA the recombinant DNA can very easily enter into the host cell. Now, once it enters into the host cell the next thing is it has to be allowed to multiply. So, generally in biotechnology when we use these uh, foreign DNA it is to produce some product on large scale. So, for large scale we have to grow or we have to culture these recombinant uh, host cells in huge containers which are called bioreactors. Bioreactors you can see that they are huge uh, tanks which has a capacity of 100 to 1000 liters a sterile condition is maintained over there and there will be continuous supply of uh, the culture medium or what we say the food of the bacteria. So, the bacteria can keep on multiplying and they can keep on producing the product. Once the product is obtained it is subjected to downstreaming. Downstreaming is nothing but along with the desired protein if any unwanted thing is there it will be separated and the protein will be purified and if required certain preservatives and other chemicals can be added before it goes for the final marketing and this marks the end of the steps of DNA technology. Students the first question two bacteria found to be very useful in genetic engineering experiments are the options are A nitrosomonas and Clipsilla, B nitrobacter and azetobacter, C rhizobium and diplococcus, D escherichi and agrobacterium. Dear students, the names of the bacteria 
given in option A, B and C, these are all involved either in nitrogen fixation or some are pathogenic bacteria that is they cause disease. But the two bacteria which are given in the last option D that is Ischiriaceae and the other one Agrobacterium, these two are the one which is extensively used in genetic engineering. Let me first begin with E. coli. E. coli is nothing but Ischiriaceae coli. This particular bacteria is very commonly used for genetic engineering. The reason for selecting this bacteria is it is a commonly available bacteria which lives in the lower part of the intestine. It can survive in normal temperature. They are not fussy about the food that they consume. Because of all these factors, they are generally uh, considered to be the best for genetic en engineering. The next one, agrobacterium. If you see agrobacterium, it is a bacteria which causes a disease called crown gall. This bacteria lives in soil and it is capable of causing the disease because of the presence of a unique plasmid in it. The plasmid is called TI plasmid that is tumor inducing plasmid. Because of the presence of this tumor inducing plasmid, when the bacteria infects the plant cells, it will incorporate or insert a small amount of the TI plasmid which is called the tDNA, goes and gets incorporated in the chromosome of the plant cell. As a result, the plant cell will get the disease, Crohn gall disease. So because this bacteria has got the power of infection, it is also considered as a good bacteria for genetic engineering experiments or uh, processes. When agrobacterium is used, it is made sure that this infective or disease causing part of the DNA is removed so that when it is used in genetic engineering, it will not cause a disease in the host which we use. Which of the following is not correctly matched for the organism and its cell wall degrading enzyme? Options are bacteria lysozyme, fungi chitinase, algae methylase, plant cell cellulase. You can see here different enzymes which have the capacity to degrade the cell wall are given and some organisms are also given over here. We have to find out whether the two given in a set match each other. That is whether the enzyme degrades the cell wall of that particular organism. To begin with the first option bacteria. Bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. So lysozyme is an enzyme which has the capacity to degrade this. Therefore A is right. Now B, fungi. Fungi is made up of chitinase. The cell wall of fungi is made up of a substance called chitin. So chitinase is also the right option because chitinase is the enzyme which degrades chitin present in the cell wall of fungi. Next, algae. The combination given with algae is an enzyme by the name methylase. Now the cell wall of algae it is made up of polysaccharides like glycoproteins. Here the enzyme which is given in the combination is methylase. Methylase is actually an enzyme which is involved in addition of methyl group to bases like adenine, cytosine. When the methyl group is added to these bases, the bases get modified and they are protected from the action of nuclease. So methylase is not an enzyme which degrades the cell wall. So that combination is wrong. The next one, plant cell. Plant cell is made up of cellulose, hemicellulose. So here cellulase is an enzyme which has the capacity to degrade cellulose. That's why that option is also correct. So among the four, the wrong option is algae and methylase. So the right answer over here is 
option C. Which enzyme is required to prevent unwanted self ligation of vector DNA molecules in a recombinant DNA technology? Options are DNA polymerase, DNA ligase, alkaline phosphatase and reverse transcriptase. DNA polymerase is required for polymerization or for the addition of nucleotides during the formation of a new strand of DNA. DNA ligase, it is commonly called molecular glue because this is an enzyme which can attach or join two segments of DNA or two fragments of DNA by formation of phosphodiester bonds. That's why it is called molecular glue. Alkaline phosphatase. This is an enzyme which removes phosphate group from the 5 prime end. Now, if a DNA wants to undergo ligation, that is if a DNA wants to join, it needs to have a phosphate group in the 5 prime end. What alkaline phosphatase does is, it removes this phosphate group present at the 5 prime end. This will make the DNA unable to undergo ligation or because of the removal of the phosphate group at the 5 prime end of the DNA, the DNA ends cannot join. So the right answer over here is alkaline phosphatase. Last enzyme that is reverse transcriptase. This enzyme plays its role during reverse transcription. DNA or what we call complementary DNA can be synthesized by using messenger RNA as a template. So the formation of DNA or complementary DNA from RNA is called reverse transcription and for this we need the enzyme reverse transcriptase. So the right answer is alkaline phosphatase. Mark the name of the appropriate stain which is used to identify DNA as orange strands under UV light. Options are hematoxylene, eosin, ethidium bromide and acetoarsine. Now hematoxylene and eosin, these are two dyes which are commonly used in medical field. These are generally used for staining histological slides. When the histological slides are stained with a combination of these two dyes, we can see differential staining. The tissues which are stained by hematoxylene will show violet or blue color and the tissues which are stained by eosin shows pink color. The next one, ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide is actually a fluorescent nucleic acid staining agent or what we say the stain, it is fluorescent. It has the capacity to absorb light energy and then it re-emits it in the form of orange colored light. This is generally used in techniques like gel electrophoresis to observe the DNA bands properly. So the DNA bands will appear orange in color. How this actually happens? Here this dye is an intercalating agent. That is, it has the capacity to move into the DNA base pairs. When once it incorporates in between, then it absorbs light and it shows fluorescence or it shows fluorescence orange color. So the right answer over here is ethidium bromide. The last one, acetoarsine. Acetoarsine is also a nuclear stain. This nuclear acid um, stain, it is commonly used for staining the nuclear material. The stained material appears pink in color, but it does not show any fluorescence. The right answer over here is ethidium bromide. 